Welcome back to the Play Action Pod. Um, my name is Brennan. This is Brock. And, uh, you know, we're here to talk about some football, some college football, um, to be specific. Uh, the season's over. Obviously had the national championship last night. Things didn't pan out the way that, uh, you know, the the hypnotodes wanted it to. Um, the dog showed up and, you know, we're, we're just going to talk about the natty to start things off. But what was your initial reaction to the national championship this year? Wow. It was wow. Um, I think we, we all kind of knew that Georgia was the favorite. Yeah. You know, I think not even going into that game, I think throughout the season, we were all just kind of like, Georgia's probably the favorite, they're probably the best team in college football, but they never really proved it. You know, I think Tennessee was, was a big kind of, okay, you know, maybe Georgia's the team, but then it's like the game against Ohio state, they were losing in the fourth quarter down by 14, had to come back to win that on a missed field goal. I expected Georgia to win. I didn't expect them to beat them by 58. Exactly. So it's like, it's interesting, you know, you know, shout out to Georgia, shout out to Stetson Bennett going back to back. You know, last time we saw it was Alabama in 2011. So it's not like it's something that happens all the time. So I think a big shout out to, to Kirby Smart and those boys, cause they really, they were ready to play from the first minute and they didn't look back. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, Georgia had some, we had some doubts for them, I would say. You know, it was a phenomenal season. Stetson Bennett obviously proved us wrong. But, you know, we saw them struggle earlier this year with a team like Missouri. And we're like, okay, is, is this really the best team in the country right now? And obviously last week, Ohio State, they hung 41 or 42 on them. And, you know, we had some questions for that defense as well. But I think that they they proved themselves uh, against this this team, um, TCU, that, I mean, they've had a they've had a miraculous season all year. And it, it's kind of sad that, their season kind of ended with that sour taste in their mouth because I think they should be, you know, proud of, of how they performed all year. Well, yeah, I think people are really trying to justify TCU's loss and there's really no way of doing it. Cause it's like, is Michigan just not good because TCU beat Michigan. So it's like, is Michigan not good? Well, Michigan beat Ohio state. Does that mean Ohio state's not good? Well, Ohio state played a close one with a team that just dogged you know, yes. TCU. So it's like, there's really no way of explaining kind of how, how the game ended up. But, you know, I, I think it, it is really, really unfortunate for TCU. Cause I think they had a lot of, mo- and I'm not saying they don't have momentum anymore, but I think they had a re- lot of momentum going into that national championship game. And it just feels like it kind of just stopped, you know? It, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what they look like in it in about what, nine months from now. But yeah, I think, I think that's just a big credit to Georgia. It's like, they really, they really just had a goal in mind and they didn't really listen to what everyone was saying about them. And they just cruised through their schedule. And then the time that they needed to erupt and play their best football, of the game or best football of the year, you know, they did. Yeah. And they were dominant all game yeah, you know, from, from the first whistle to, mm-hmm. to the very, when the clocks hit zero, they were dominant all game. It seemed like they could do whatever they want. I mean, with all that talent, I was seeing five to six different receivers getting targeted on a consistent basis. I mean, there's so much talent on both sides of the ball. And I think a lot of that has to do with the defense. You know, when yeah. your defense goes out there and is stopping a TCU team who's been successful all season, you know, it gives your offense a lot of confidence to be able to be creative, you know, run those plays that we saw last night. And, you know, I, I thought that was the key to success for for the dogs last night. Yeah, and it's, I don't, I don't think they did anything special. You know, I don't think they did anything, you know, out of the ordinary. It's like, there's a lot of blown coverages. There's a lot of missed tackles. I, I, don't, I don't think TCU played, you know, even close to their best game, but it's, I think it just shows if, if you don't, if you don't bring your hundred percent effort to a team like Georgia, you're going to get embarrassed. Yeah. There's five and, stars all over the field. Yeah. It's like, and it didn't, it didn't really take them long. You know, they really, I think what well, they went three and out and then they immediately scored. So it's like, you, you got to bring your hundred percent effort, maybe even more than that. You've yeah. got to bring like 110% effort to play a team like Georgia or else you're just going to get embarrassed like that. But I don't know. I think 58 points is the, is the largest national championship deficit of all time. Yeah. So it's like, Which sucks. it does suck. You know, I think it was more the tweets of seeing people being like TCU fans paid two grand for those tickets to watch that. So right. I was like, that's brutal. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think David Pollock said something on the halftime show about how, you know, Georgia kind of runs college football right now. He said it right to Nick. Oh Saban yeah. Too. Yeah. I saw that clip. 
And I think it's hard to disagree. You know, it's like you look at the team that they have coming back. It's still full of, you know, draft picks, NFL draft picks, five-star kids, four-star kids. So it's like, it's hard to not envision a world where Georgia's not back next year. Yeah. Yeah. And competing against Alabama, who we, I mean, we see Bama in the playoff every single year. And, you know, to stay on the Alabama subject, I know that we don't really like to talk about them that much, but, uh, you know, would they put up a bigger fight? Obviously they probably would have played a better game than TCU did last night. So, I mean, is that, is that a fault in the system? Is that something that's going to be fixed with the 12 team model coming up? I hope so. Because, you know, I get, I get the narrative, you know, if you put Alabama on that field last night to Georgia, they don't lose by 58. They probably don't even lose by, by 20. I think it's probably like a 10, maybe 14 point game. And that's maybe even stretching it a little bit, but it's like, if you think about it, Georgia or Alabama's two losses was LSU on the road on a two point conversion and TCU on a game winning field or Tennessee on a game winning field goal. Both on the road, both on the road. So it's like, it is maybe unfortunate that they missed the playoffs based off of, of those two games, but you know, and, and this is, you know, a business where you got to win those type of games, right? Exactly. So I don't disagree. I think Alabama does put up a better fight than TCU did. And it's, it just comes down to the fact that Alabama can match Georgia with those, you know, five-star, four-star kids. Yeah. But TCU deserved to be there. I think TCU deserved to be there, but it's, I think it just begs that question. It's like, I think you can make the argument that, that a couple teams deserve to be there, but it's like, are we looking for the team that deserves to be there? Are we looking for the team that's going to, you know, compete? Yeah. And I think that's what the 12 team playoff will fix. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. Is you're going to get 12 teams that deserve to be there. Right. But just because you deserve to be there doesn't mean, you know, you deserve to win it all. And I think that's going to be the big difference with the 12 team playoff. And every team in the country will have an opportunity to, you know, compete for a national championship. Mm -hmm. Something we haven't seen before, you know, with auto bids and, uh, you know, group of five getting an auto bid as well. So, I mean, top to bottom, every team will have a chance to be able to make the playoff, you know, make some noise. That's not something we've seen before. You know, we, we've seen some group of five teams go undefeated. UCF in the past didn't make the playoff. I mean, Cincinnati, they did last year. Um, you know, they were put away. But yeah, it was for, you know, for TCU, it just makes me sad, you know, because it was such an inspirational season. And for it to end like that, just kind of like, it, it really just broke my heart because I don't want people to, you know, criticize them. I mean, they they got their butts kicked. Like, mm -hmm. but but what, they, what they've done all season with Max Duggan, you know, coming off the bench and being a Heisman finalist, I think that, you know, there's, they deserve as much credit as possible. Yeah, and I think the, the, the main thing that that game showed was how different, you know, the talent level is in the SEC. Maybe not even just the SEC as a whole, just maybe those top three teams. It's just a different ball game, you know, and it's until we get that talent to, to disperse to all five conferences and to all the top teams, I think you're going to continue to see this, you know, kind of stuff. And it's not, it's not a shot at uh, Georgia or Alabama. It's, it's you guys recruit the best and, and you get the best kids and then you develop them the best. Yeah. And so like, if you're a kid who wants to, to be developed the best and you, you want to play at the highest level, like where are you going to go? You know, yeah. you're going to go to one of those two teams. And I think it also shows the job that Kirby Smart has done. Yeah. You know, it's like we saw him, what was that? Was that 2019 when they lost to Alabama on the game winner in mm -hmm. overtime? I think after that, I was like, wow. I was like, or maybe that was 2020. I think that was 2020. Cause I think 2019 was LSU. But I think after that moment, I was like, good job, Georgia. That's the closest you'll come to a national championship. Yeah, and then back to back. And then they go back to back, you know? So it's like, it just shows the margins in this game. And I think it's, I think it really, the thing that TCU should take from that game is, is where you need to get better. And you really looked at that game and, and Georgia was, they were bigger, they were stronger, they were faster. So for TCU, you got to recruit bigger athletes. You got to recruit faster athletes and you got to get them stronger. And I think once you see teams, you know, start to do that with their kids, I think, you know, maybe that, that talent gap decreases a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's going to be tough to recruit, you know, players that are faster, stronger and better than, you know, what, what George is bringing in. Yeah. You know, based off of their past success and, and, you know, going back to back, that's, that's only going to help the recruiting process. Oh yeah. Uh, from, from now on. So 
I think Georgia is, you know, maybe maybe we're on the front end of seeing the dogs being a, a big dynasty, kind of similar to what the Crimson Tide has uh, been able to build over there. Yeah, and I, th- I think right now the only team I could see slowing them down or stopping them is the Crimson Tide. Is the Crimson Tide? I don't think anybody else. What about like, like USC? We saw Ohio State compete with Georgia, but I think after that game, I, I looked and I was like, that was probably Georgia's, you know, C effort. And, you know, Ohio State put out their A, their a effort. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, you know, still came up short, but I don't know. I, I just think it's Alabama right now. I just think they have the closest talent to Georgia. And so I think they're going to be a team that we look out for in, in the SEC to, to compete with them. Yeah, and I think for TCU, you know, the, the game that I'm looking forward to is is going to be that season opener would be uh, would be the game against Colorado. No yeah. Dion. It was it was potential um, national or uh, it'd be if TCU would have won, it would have been, you know, national champion playing against Dion in, in this first game. Yeah. And I don't know. I think we, we have tons of questions with Dion as a whole in Colorado, but I think they will be improved. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, because I, I I think it was, I don't know if it was Chris or Kirk, but they're saying that TCU is losing like 30 to 35 kids. So it's going to be a whole new team, yeah. basically. So it's going to be interesting to see what Sonny Dykes does in year two because he did inherit a very, very good roster. So now it's going to be, you know, how can he develop the younger kids and get them ready to play in year two? Yeah. You think Georgia could three-peat? Easily. Easy. I don't I don't see why they wouldn't. You know, I think they're they're far and away the favorite. And you know, I think the scary thing about Georgia is is we've always kind of wondered, you know, what if you put Caleb Williams into that team? What if you put like Drake May into that Georgia team? I think they go up a, a level, you know, and that's not discredit to, to Stetson Bennett. I think he knew his role and I think he did his job, you know, to the highest of his ability. But it's like Is he an NFL guy? He's not a first round guy, right? Yeah. You know, he's not He's not, you know, a, a franchise quarterback. I, I hope he actually does kind of get a shot in the NFL because I think it'd be interesting to see, you know, going from an underdog, you know, story at Georgia to an underdog story in the NFL. You know, maybe he turns that into something. But but I think, you know, if Georgia can get even better at the at the at the quarterback position, I think they they're gonna go up in another level, which yeah. is just terrifying. And they're bringing in that five star next year. Yeah. So I thought that that'll be scary. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with Georgia, but I think they're definitely the the favorite right now. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, you know, I think I think that's gonna wrap things up for the national championship. Hope the next year's game is you know a little bit closer, and I think that the year after that, twenty twenty four, we'll we'll get more intriguing matchups with the playoff and everything when when there's that new model. 